Yo, man, LAZ, man, Gem Pop TV. You heard the next big channel on YouTube. You heard? This is the best jail stories, street stories, hood stories you ever saw in your life, Rikers Island stories, all in syndication. You heard? It's too much content on my regular channel for everybody to see every episode, man. So I got to put some of these episodes back out so the peoples could see them. You heard? And that's what this Gen Pop TV thing is about. But don't get it twisted. There will be exclusive content that's on Gen Pop TV only. And that's a fact. You heard? But comment, gang, make sure y'all tear this up. I need 100, 200 comments on this in the first half hour. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. You heard both channels, the St. Laz channel and the Gen Pop TV channel. Share these videos to Facebook. Tweet these videos out. Send them to a friend. Let's get it. I'm coming from the hood one night, and the police get, well, the jump, the jump out boys get behind me. This is the drug unit. They get behind me. So they don't pull me. They call for a regular city officer to pull me. As soon as the city officer get ready to come to my window, I hit him, put him on high speed chase. You feel me? So I'm coming through the city or whatever. I jump out of my car. Okay, so I grew up in Panama, right? My mama died when I was 10 of a bad overdose of heroin. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of her going, proud of her dying. And she died on Halloween night. You feel me? Um, but proud of her dying, my mama was in prison two times. So imagine me being 10 years old. We only really got a, a, a short amount of time of my life span being together due to the fact that I'm being in prison or whatever. So I have one sibling, which is my sister. We was back and forth. My sister either lived with my grandma. I live with my auntie, which is my grandmother's sister. You know what I'm saying? She raised me. I speak about her and a lot of my music, named Ada May. Um, but I, you know, I jumped off the porch when I was 11. You know what I'm saying? Just start you know, doing certain things of see, of what I was seeing in my neighborhood. I grew up in the projects, you feel me? So, um, you know, just being a hustler was, was, was in me, you know what I'm saying, from my mama, you feel me? But, you know, I started doing my thing. At first, I was sneaking from my cousins, you know, um, and my, my aunties, they sold drugs as well. So I, I steal some of their work, you feel me, go cross town. And, uh, and me and one of my friends used to do our thing. But long story short, when I got 15 years old, you know what I'm saying? I did my thing and um, the police was on us or whatever. And I, when I came back off the Greyhound bus, actually I was coming from Tallahassee, um, got off the Greyhound bus, went to the spot and the police rushed. That was my first trafficking case. You know what I'm saying? Which it was like 750 grams, almost a brick. You feel me? Mm -hmm. um, but back then, it was half cocaine and half hard. You know what I'm saying? You already know how, you know, crack is is, is way more strict than then, you feel me? Mm -hmm. um, but I was 15 and they weighed me to an adult. I actually took the whole charge. Like, I, it was mine, you feel me? It was other people there, but I took, they was older. You know what I'm saying? So I just took the whole case. And, you know, they basically used to ask me where I get it from. And I, I was a sarcastic ass kid at the time, you feel me? Um, I tell them, you know, uh, I put my money in the ground, you feel me? And then I come back and the drugs there. Yeah. You know, they beat me with the, put the um, telephone books on my head, on my chest, you know what I'm saying? Beat me and, you know, all type of shit. I'm a kid, bro. You feel me? Like 15 years old, literally. Um, so they waited, you know, I was in the um, DYS. We call it DYS, y'all be called it. I don't know what y'all call it, but it's, you know, for juveniles. Yeah. Um, but they waved me over to an adult. So they waved me over to an adult, and then I, my first time I went to prison, I went to uh, Indian River, um, which is a uh, youth flow friend of program, but it's 25 and under. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, of course you go through the, of course you go through the reception center, which is Lake Butler, uh, where uh, where everybody at. You know what I'm saying? That's what Death Row at in Florida, all type of shit. You, you feel me? Mm. Um, so long story short, I did that bid. I did two years and six months you know what I'm saying so I got out and my first sentence this is crazy how the system worked my first sentence 
was an illegal guideline sentence. They gave me five years with 10 years probation. You feel me? Mm. So during this time, we had a system in Florida called CRD. You know what I'm saying? Control release date. Well, they was giving out so much game time. If you had five years, you probably could come home in like six or seven months. That's how much game time they was giving out every week. Um, but for me, they gave me a controlled release date, meaning on a set date, I had to do two years. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, I did the two years. I came home. Um, let me rewind just a little bit because I just thought about it. My first initial charge um, from when I started getting in trouble, I was coming home from school. I probably was in like, actually, I was in the fifth grade. And uh, I had some new shoes or whatever. was coming through the trail, and it started raining. And this white kid that lived in my neighborhood um, was playing and, like, threw the board off of the, off from over the little ditch that we was walking across. And my shoes, like, fell into the ditch. So I ran him down, beat him up, and told him I was going to beat his ass if he didn't give me the money for my shoes. You know what I'm saying? Um, man, I promise you, probably like two hours later, the police came and picked me up, and you you can't even imagine what they charged me with. This was before you got caught with them with the seven hundred and fifty grams. Yeah, this was before. This was my this was my very first charge. This was my very first charge. They charged me with extortion, bro. That shit was still on my record when I was an adult. That's was that was part of when I get to that story of me being, the, you know, what I'm saying of me, you know get into my later times my second time going to prison you, you'll understand what I'm saying but um, yeah that was my first charge bro they gave me extortion you know what I'm saying um, and that shit's still on my record to this day like it's crazy okay so past that I go to I go to prison I get out of prison um, but I didn't go to prison for extortion all of them things added up when I caught my drug charge my trafficking charge okay so I go to prison I get out of prison then I started doing music a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, fuck around with the music or whatever. But I really wasn't taking it serious. I was just, you know, just doing it. Um, and long story short, maybe like uh, two years later, keep in mind I was on 10 years probation. So two years later, I, I, I evidently I violated, you know what I'm saying? I stopped going to see my probation officer again. I got back in the street, started back doing my thing or whatever. Um, and I'm coming from the hood one night and the police get, well, the jump, the jump out boys get behind me. This is the drug unit. They get behind me. So they don't pull me. They call for a regular city officer to pull me. So the city officer get behind me and he pull me. So I turn on the street. I pull over. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, they behind the city officer. Um, as well. So as soon as the city officer get ready to come to my window, I hit him, put him on a high speed chase. You feel me? So I'm coming through the city or whatever. I jump out of my car, run in the woods, and uh, you know, later on they didn't catch me that night. But um they what they did was the drug unit got in my car and rolled through the neck through it's a place that we call and my city called Candy Corner, which we call it the blocks. It's like where everybody go hang out hang out at you know what I'm saying it's got two clubs um and then like a little a little place where you get food at or whatever but like people just go there to hang out and uh you know people was like they came through in my car and shit playing the music and you know just doing some 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 nasty shit or whatever but long story short uh maybe a couple months later what you mean the police came through with your car to the hood like the drug unit the drug the jump out boys what they just what they just came through pretending that they was you to see who was gonna come up to the oh, car. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They was just running up to the car and everything. Like that's what they do. They do that. They 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 may they may come through the hood in a U-Haul or whatever, anything and jump out. Mm. Like they that they that's how they do it. So a couple months pass, I wind up getting getting caught. You know what I'm saying? Leaving the block, the same place that I was telling you about. Um, they got behind me again. And uh, I put them on high speed chase, but they what they caught me. They, they caught me this time with a firearm and a um, four and a half of uh, 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 cocaine. You know what I'm saying? So I go to prison my second time. Um, they, my sentence was seven years, but I do four years. I do four years and like two months, some shit like that. Four years and like two months. Um, 
and that's when I moved to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? My sister came and got me when I got out of prison. I moved to Atlanta, and then I really kind of got serious with my music. Um, then I moved back to Florida, and I started back hustling again. You know what I'm saying? Um, make a long story short, I called a trafficking case because me and my homeboy was in the car, right? And he asked me to pull by the hotel or whatever before I dropped him off. So as soon as I drop him off, he go in the hotel, he come out the hotel, the police rush. They got This is why I got a song called Indictment Papers. You know what I'm saying? But I say so many dots look like a nigga got the chicken pox. That's what that's from, that's from all the red beam lights they had on us. You know what I'm saying? For us not to move the vehicle. Um, so they basically charged us both. You know what I'm saying? But me, you know, I had my lawyer fight it and then they threw my case out. Okay, now fast forward. I'm really doing my music real, real heavy. You feel me? I just got signed to CTE, the Young Jeezy. You feel me? So we do the we do the ball drop in New York for New Year's Eve. We get ready to go on tour in Europe. Um, but we're gonna go to um um to Jamaica for the weekend before we go to Europe. So I never had my passport. So I had to go get my passport. I go to the passport office try to get my passport. Um, so that, you know, I could be in there maybe like 10, 15 minutes, the lady like, we in the computer, uh, you're gonna have to come back in two days or whatever. So I come back in two days, and when I come back in the sec- on the set, well, they call me first and say, you can come get your passport. So I'm like, cool. I go to the passport office. As soon as I pull up, I just feel something. It don't even feel right. Like, you could just feel the vibe was off. So me and Slick pull in the car together. He in the car with me. And um, so I back in at the passport office, and it just seemed like extremely dead. Like in the in the whole parking lot, streaming seemed extremely dead. But it's a whole bunch of cars there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, whatever. So as I'm getting out the car, I open my phone to call my sister, cause I just don't feel right. So the lady meet me outside. She like, what's your name? And I'm like, um, my name is Bruce Foster. She's like, oh yeah, yeah, come inside. You know what I'm saying? So as I'm coming inside. My sister finally answered, and when my sister finally answered, the feds rush. You know what I'm saying? A- the ATF, the feds, you know what I'm saying? All type of different units rush. Okay. So they grab my phone, they close my phone, but I had a next cell phone during this time. And you know, sometimes if you close it, you st- it's still on. So my sister hearing everything that's going on. Come to find out, I got an indictment in the state of Florida. So they picking me up on the indictment in the state of Florida. So they take me to the Atlanta Penitentiary. Well, no, they take me to the jail first in Atlanta. And the Atlanta jail take me to the penitentiary. Uh, I got to stay at the penitentiary for like three weeks. And then they ship me to Tallahassee. And that's where I faced my indictment. You know what I'm saying? Um, long story short, you feel me? We did a speedy trial. And, uh, you know, by the grace of God, I won my case first time in 25 years in the state of Florida. In the Northern District of the state of Florida, somebody beat the feds, you feel me? Mm. So I get out, you know what I'm saying? After I get out, that's when we do the USDA shit. And then my solo album, you feel me? And then I'm here now. That's big business, bro. Yeah, man. It's a blessing from God, you feel me? Like, no doubt, you know what I'm saying. Like I can't even get, I can't even get my lawyer the credit. He just was a vessel, you know what I'm saying. I got to get all the credit, to God, always, no matter what. Their conviction rate is so high because either told or taking a plea. You know what I'm saying. Very few people go to trial in the feds, bro. Yeah, they got something like a 97% conviction rate or something, right? Yeah, and that's only because either they tell or they, or they take a plea. It's crazy. Like, so so when I was in there, I actually, to stay away from these dudes, like, I actually was going to church, like, almost every single day, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just the, you know, like, I ain't have, like... You can't even have your paperwork in there. Or like niggas will go in your room and try to steal your paperwork and jump on your case. What you mean? Like, um, try to tell on you? Steal your paperwork so oh, they yeah. can tell on you? Hell yeah. That, like, they don't even have to know you personally. That, all they got to say is, it, 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 like, 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 they play it so nasty, bro. They'll give them, they'll give them, 
just a little bit of information about you. They'll, they'll, they even coach them what to say and everything. That's crazy, bro. Like, the niggas literally, bro, have the agent's phone number and they go to the, to the, to the, you'll hear them on the phone. Like, you could be there making a call to your family. They'd be on the phone talking to the agents like they their partner. Mm, mm, mm. I never heard no shit like that. That's crazy. Oh yeah, no, nah, it's real, dog. It's real. It's re- let me tell you. Let me tell you. This is a this is a crazy story. Two it, two of my personal friends, right? We was in prison together. When I went to prison my second time, we all was in prison together. We all said what we was gonna do when we got out, right? You feel me? With fucking with each other. So we all get out. One of my homeboys, he from Miami. My other homeboy from Tallahassee. Let me tell you, this this shit is crazy. So. My homeboy from Tallahassee got he got knocked off, so he in the feds first. Okay, so then, but we 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 never got together when we got out. But these three separate events, let me tell you, I'm just showing you how it worked. So my home, my first homeboy from Tallahassee he got knocked off. Okay, so of course they picked me up, so they shipped me to Tallahassee. The t- while I'm in Tallahassee, I see on the news that a guy tried to outrun the police on I ten. With a brick of a of, of boy of heroin in the car, he tried to throw it out the car while his car was on fire. Instead of throwing it in the fire, he tried to throw it out the car while the car was on fire. So they bring him in. Guess who told on him? Guess who told on him for them to find out that was going on? Who? The nigga that was in the, our homeboy that was in the fans first. And he was helping him. He, he had went home too or he was still in the in the spot no he was still in the spot but he got his girl that's what niggas do like a lot of if a lot of niggas if, if niggas if niggas if niggas if say a person a dude locked up right they'll have somebody on the street that's trying to, that's gonna set somebody up and they'll get the credit for it Mm-mm-mm. so he had his girl making my home but think that he was finna help him out with his lawyer and all type of shit he was setting them up the whole time. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, that shit nasty, dog. That shit nasty. That shit nasty. Like, you feel me? Like, nasty. And this is this the biggest thing, what people don't know. It's it, like, a lot of people know about rats, but it's, 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 it's other type of rats, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, and what they call is deep breathing. You will never know that this person is the police unless you go to trial. Because you can't see no paperwork on nobody that's told on you unless you go on the trial. So it's a lot of niggas that we be out here thinking that they're real. They're not real. They just never had to go to trial. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm saying that to say this. I had a homeboy who debriefed on me two years prior to them catching me. He told him a whole story two years prior. So when I finally got locked up, he was in my trial on the stand. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? And if I would have got convicted, he would have got half his time cut. And, and if you would have, if you would have just took a plea, you might have never knew. Exactly. I wouldn't have never knew. That's I would have never knew if I would have took a plea. Yo, so check it, right? So, like I told you. I was getting that trauma in Hudson, you heard? Heavily. We did a lot of smoking it, but we also did a lot of selling it and getting that bread. You feel what I'm saying? So you know in jail, weed is a real commodity. Like, well, it used to be. I heard things done change now. I heard now they want that deuce, you heard? Bugging. When I was locked up, weed was a serious commodity. Like, everybody wants some weed, man. Nobody want to be in jail doing a bunch of time and they can't smoke every once in a while. You feel what I'm saying? Me personally, it got to a point where I needed to smoke every single day, even though I was in jail. In green, I got spoiled. We were smoking too much. You heard? So when I got to Hudson, I was already used to smoking a day. So when I started getting it, I linked up with other dudes who had that dank and we was getting that and we kept a nice a nice comfortable amount of weed fluctuating in the jail so me and my bro high mills 
me and Hamo used to eat together, basically. You feel what I'm saying? We was in the same dorm in D Cottage, and we used to, you know, and we used to put in eat to, and, and eat together, right? One time, it was mad funny, man. I never forgot. I felt like shit. One time, I used to make this seafood, this seafood ziti, right? Should be having mac, octopus, oysters, clams, but trust me, I used to lace it crazy. So dudes used to be asking me to make it. Yo, make that seafood ziti with the with the biscuits. I like, I bet. So one time we made that, and I used to put a little a little bit of sugar in my tomato sauce to kill the acid. But one time I OD'd with the sugar. Know what I mean? And I gave that nigga, I gave that nigga Ham on his bowl. With, with, with his seafood ziti, we was in the TV room. That nigga was like, yo, yo, Lotus, man. Yo, come on, man, this shit, man, sweet, man. So I'm like, yo, what you talking about? He like, yo, this shit, like, nigga just melted some, melted some lollipops over some ziti or something, my nigga, come on, man. This shit dumb sweet. I felt like shit, I'm like, damn, man, nigga saying, nigga saying, you know, a, a cook be sensitive, my nigga. I'm like, damn, now I gotta redeem myself, but, we used to eat right. I'ma keep it real with you. Me and that nigga Han Mills, we used to eat right. So boom. So we got dank. We devised a, a hustle. We said, yo, look, this is what we gonna do. We gonna sell certain sticks. You think you you talk you talking about you think I represent that slim blunt gang now. If you would have seen how slim these sticks was and we were selling up north, it's hilarious. You heard so. We like, this is what we going to do. We going to sell the fat sticks for two packs. At this time, you could still have cigarettes. Two packs of cigarettes was like, like $7 or something like that. We would sell the fat sticks for two packs of Newports. And we would sell the skinny sticks for a box of chicken. They had that banquet frozen fried chicken in commissary. Certain jails got that. And up north in New York, that was like the best thing you could buy in commissary. The frozen banquet chicken. You feel what I'm saying? So everybody used to be. This is when I still was eating chicken, obviously. But everybody used to be thirsty to get that banquet fried chicken. If that shit was sold out, niggas be mad. And my moms used to be sending me up the Tyson Selects. Like, with, with, with like a breast in the pack. Them shits was delicious. They was baked. Like rotisserie. But, um, yeah, the banquet fried chicken in commissary. That was like the hottest commodity in commissary. So we wanted that shit every day. Like it got to a point where we was eating so greatly that, you know, Mac was beneath us. So we really was just only eating fried chicken every night. You feel me? Every once in a while we switch it up to some seafood ziti or some Mac, but it got to a point where Mac was beneath us basically. And all we really fucked with was that bank with fried chicken. So word to everything I love, me and the nigga Hamo used to be in the basement of D Cottage, standing in front of the TV room, my nigga. Like, we on the block in New York City, and it's a spot, you feel me? So, on movie night, Friday, Saturday night, either son I have the joint for two packs and I have the one for chicken, or vice versa. Bruh, he stand on one side of the hallway, I stand on the other side of the hallway, and we be serving niggas all night long. Niggas be coming through. Yo, let me get two of those chickens and let me get uh, two of the regulars. You heard? Bruh, when I tell you me and this nigga used to be slinging like we was in the town, nigga. You heard? We was slinging like, like, like this shit was tippies back in motherfucking 91, 92. You heard? My nigga, we be in that hallway all day long. Every race, color, creed, gang. Everybody was copping from us. When we came out with that chicken deal, because some niggas couldn't afford to buy a stick and they owed two packs of cigarettes. They couldn't afford that. But niggas couldn't afford a box of chicken. A box of chicken was like, I think, only $4 or whatever. So, my nigga, niggas used to be owing us like 30 boxes of chicken on commissary, right? So, ain't no refrigerators or freezers. Um, They ain't have none of that. If I could remember correctly, they ain't have no fridge or nothing like that. We had so many boxes of motherfucking chicken, we had to stack them shits up in the window. You heard? So it, in the winter time, so that them shits could stay cold. So literally in my one man room, my whole window was covered with boxes of chicken. And both my windows, 
Homo, he had his window covered with boxes of chicken. We had so much motherfucking boxes of chicken, my nigga, and we was eating so lovely. Niggas started getting hot. You heard? Niggas started getting hot. I think niggas started telling on us like, yo, these niggas, son, I ain't go to commissary in months. I stopped going to commissary. I stopped going to the mess hall. We was getting too much weed bread and we had too much food. Like our whole shit was flooded. We ain't even have enough room to hold all of the food that we had. And bro, we had like cartons and cartons and cartons of cigarettes, my nigga. We was the store, like we was commissary. You feel what I'm saying? Word to my mother, so one day, police pop up at my cell. Like, yo, we want to do a search. You want to search your cell? So I'm like, fuck these niggas searching my cell for. So I know I ain't have, I wasn't slipping. I ain't have nothing, nothing that they was going to find or whatever. You feel what I'm saying? So niggas search my, niggas start searching my shit. So he looked under my bed. He like, what's that under your bed? So I'm like, yo, now under my bed, my nigga, I had a giant tissue box, like, the tissue probably come with like 200 rolls in it when they send it to the dorm. I had the giant uh, tissue box under my bed that literally took up the whole under my bed. So when he lifted up my shit, he seen it was a box going all the way down the side of my bed. You're like, what the fuck is this? Right now, remember, we selling, we selling weed. We just, so when niggas used to go to the store, a nigga may owe us eight packs of cigarettes. We'd be like, yo, just get me all kidney beans. Yo, just get me all tuna fish. Yo, get me soups and cookies. Like, we don't always have to. And we give niggas a deal. Like, if you owe uh, four packs of cigarettes, which may be, let's say, $20. I'm just saying the number. We'd be like, yo, just give me $18 in beans. You feel what I'm saying? So, bro, we had so much shit. I used to have this box under my bed. And I'd be throwing whatever people owe me in the box. And never really checking on the box. Because I had. we also had, like, a cabinet. Like a cabinet dresser where that shit was packed with my food and then the food under the bed was my, my reserve food. So I so a nigga would come through with fifty, sixty dollars worth of commissary that he owed me. I would dump fifty of that shit into the box under my bed and stack up ten of that shit because that's all it could hold was my dresser. So in my dresser. So basically I was neglecting the box under my bed because we had so much food. We would never run out of food. And then on top of that, I had my nigga uptown. You heard my nigga uptown with the dreads. Holla at me, my nigga. I had the nigga uptown stealing the whole mess hall. That's a whole nother story that my nigga could come on the channel and tell. Because he got knocked off stealing out the mess hall. Bro, this nigga right here, my nigga. I had this nigga stealing the whole mess hall, my nigga. So in my queue, in my room, I had five, six kilos of motherfucking Kool-Aid. Motherfucking... Whatever the mess hall had to offer, I had that shit in the stash. You feel what I'm saying? Chicken. You know what I mean? Motherfucking pizzas. Whatever the fuck a nigga could steal from the mess hall. I was getting 10, 15 pound bags of rice. This nigga uptown to be popping up. Yo, I got 15 pounds of rice. I'm like, yo, my nigga, how the fuck, how you sneak 15 pounds of rice out the mess hall? He be like, yo, yo, don't ask no questions. He be like, yo, don't ask no questions. Don't ask no questions. You want this 15 pounds of rice? I be like, give me that shit. That's my word. That nigga know I had that weed. <laughs> that nigga uptown knew I had that dank. That nigga wasn't playing no games. Every day he popping up. Yo, I got a, I got a brick of cheese. Got a brick of medic, a brick of cheddar cheese. You want it? Hell yeah, I want it. Let me get that. You heard? Eggs. You couldn't really get eggs. Nigga popping up. Yo, I got the, the liquid eggs. So let me get that. So we had everything, my nigga. We was eating like kings. So the police, when this nigga, when this nigga sees the box under my shit, he like, yo. What's that? What's that under there? I said, yo, that's my that's my food and shit. Like, so he like, you got food in here. Like, you got more food under there? I'm like, yeah. So he like, pull pull a box out. Now I got my socks on. Cause I was laying down in my bed. Bro, I get up, I try to pull it. I'm like, alright, let me pull the shit from under the bed. I try to pull the shit from under the bed. I slip. The shit's so heavy, it pulls me down. I slip and fall on the floor. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I had never, I haven't touched this box in months, my nigga. I said, yo, I tried to pull that shit. I couldn't pull it out. So the police reached down. He started trying to pull the shit out. He like, what the fuck? What's in here? Nigga thought it was a body in that shit or something. Niggas pull, we, me and the nigga, me and the police had to pull that shit to get that shit from under the bed. I pull that shit out, nigga. That shit had about 200 cans of tuna fish. That shit had the whole commissary in that shit. So he was like, police was like, what the fuck? 
He said, yo, you got the whole commissary in here. What, what you what you doing with all this commissary? I was like, yo, you know what I mean? Um, I be buying a lot of stuff from commissary and you know, I don't I just be stacking it, I don't be eating it. He like, yo, there's no way in the world you bought all of this shit right here. He said, I'm going to check the the the, the book. Cause in the book they got like everything a nigga went, spent in the commissary, everything. Nigga went, check my shit. Nigga said, yo, you didn't go to the commissary for like the last five or six commissaries. How do you have all of this food and you ain't been to commissary in months? I said, yo, like, I ain't I ain't know what to tell a nigga, my nigga. I couldn't tell a nigga, yo, my nigga, I sell weed in the spot, man, and niggas be hitting me off, man. What the fuck? Real I couldn't I couldn't tell a nigga that. You feel me? So that nigga was like, yo, I gotta write this up, man. I gotta write this up. Now, I mean, it's some corny ass law, excessive commissary or some dumb shit. He like, yo, I gotta write this up. I'm like, write this up for what? My nigga, this is my shit. He like, you can't prove, you ain't, you can't show no receipts for this shit. You, I'm gonna have to write you up. So I'm like, oh man, you feel me? The nigga wrote me up and I'm, I'm now I'm scared they gonna call me for a piss test. I'm thinking these niggas gonna um, put two and two together and realize I'm a motherfucking drug dealer in the spot. And them niggas gonna come run down on me, give me 30 piss tests, they gonna get me up out of here. So now I'm mad, nervous, drinking mad water all day, running around with a big ass water, looking extra hot, drinking mad water, about to piss on myself every two seconds. And them niggas, they never called me down for a piss test. I don't know why. I mean, they wrote me up for the excessive commissary shit, wasn't really nothing. You feel me? I might even beat the ticket. Like, listen, bro, this is, this is shit. I just don't be, you know what I mean? I don't be eating like that. But trust me when I tell you, my nigga, me and the nigga Han Mills, we used to be in that basement in Hudson and it's dark down there. So it's like going to a dark New York City back block. You heard? That shit dark, nigga. We used to be down there serving all day, all night for two, three hours. Like, niggas be like, yo, y'all niggas not watching the movie? Be like, we good. We just sit in front of that shit all day, just shooting the shit and cussies be coming down. Yo, can I get two chicken joints? Yo, can I get three of the regular joints and one chicken joint? All fucking day, nigga. We was getting it. We was smoking that shit all day long and slinging that shit all day long, my nigga. You heard? But I definitely got caught with that big baboon. That big baboon box of food. It was ridiculous. Shout out to my nigga L Famous. Because he was telling me a story the other day. Made me remember that I got to tell this story. You heard? But yeah, man. Shout out to the whole Gen Pop, man. Go go check my new movie. You heard Body Parts, The Story of Turquoise, Serial Killer in the Projects. You heard? Go check my new movie. Join my Patreon, $10 a month. I'm going to do a whole exclusive series just for my Patreon page. I'm still uploading all my jail street shit on this page, but I'm doing a whole nother series called Behind the, um, Before the Partnership, where I talk about my struggle in the rap game. You heard my whole struggle in the rap game and all the shit I've been through trying to come up in the rap game. You feel what I'm saying? That's going that's going to be strictly on Patreon, $10 a month, and I guarantee you you'll have exclusive movies and episodes that you will not see on YouTube at all ever. You heard so make sure y'all join my shit. Holla at me, my niggas. Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man. You already snuck.